Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is Rabbi Moshe Oterom with the Ways of Israel. Welcome to another video this morning. And we are going to continue the class of Sefer Haikarim, which is the Sefer written by Rabbi Joseph Albo, the 15th, 14th, 15th century um, Spanish or Jewish rabbi who had an effect upon Jewelry as well as other rabbis of that time that really impressed the concepts of the idea of one God and the fundamentals of Judaism. And so we're now in chapter two, I'm sorry, chapter seven of book two, and uh, we are going through this every day, every morning, a little bit at a time to be able to digest a little bit what Rabbi Albo is saying. He's taking it from a very philosophical point and then cites occasionally uh, biblical verses to support his argument. One of the major arguments that he's supporting is that God does not have a body. Of course, this is also supported in, the, in our Torah and Numbers which says clearly that God is not a man nor a son of man that he should lie. This morning I woke up and was watching some of my social medias and there was someone there, apparently a Muslim, uh, arguing that J.C. was not God. Obviously, that has become the fundamental basis of the distinction between Judaism and Christianity and other isms, as it were, the fact of uh, the idea of uh, a man being God or God coming in the form of a man. And this, obviously, Rabbi Albo dismisses completely as being part of what he considers heresy or not correct thinking within the religious point of view. So let's jump right on in, share this video, and also be part of what we're doing. And you can do so by contacting us directly on the different links that we have below where you can be able to contribute, you can be able to be a member of the Ways of Israel and help support what we're doing worldwide. We have over 40 communities that started from zero and currently right now are active and practicing and the most important thing congregating in different areas here in Florida as well as in Latin America. Well let's get started this morning so not to waste any more time. From these four secondary dogmas says Rabbi Alba which follows as we have seen from the first principle the existence of God there there issue many branches in this form of the first derivative dogma unity it follows that we must reject such divine attributes as wisdom strength generosity etc because they are all attributes added to the essence but since God is one in every way he cannot have either essential or accidental attributes for they all involve the multiplicity and are inconsistent with unity. From the first derivative dogma, the incorporeality, it follows that we must not ascribe to God any corporeal emotions such as anger and sorrow and joy and grudge, for all of these are emotions associated with body and or corporeal force. From the third derivative dogma, independence of time, it follows that his power is infinite and that he has infinite ability and infinite perfection. Therefore, there cannot be in him any equality or similarity of other things. For since they all emanate from him, their power must be or must necessarily be finite. And having a finite power, they are dependent upon time. But God who produced them, since he is their creator, is eternal and infinite. This is the meaning of the biblical text. I am the first and I am the last. And besides me, there is no God. Hence, since I am eternal, there is no God that can be equal to me. In the same strain, in the following passage, to whom then will ye liken me, that I should be equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who hath created these. From the fourth derivative dogma, freedom from defect, it follows that we must not 
ascribe to God anything that looks like a defect, such as ignorance or weariness. Now, there is no need for, of asking why we need we, we name these four dogmas as derived from the first fundamental principles and did not mention the dogmas that God is wise, possessing will, powerful, living, and so on, in the same way as we mentioned unity, or why we did not mention such dogmas as that God has no genus or differences or similar to him or opposition or change and so on, same way as we mentioned incorporeality or why we did not mention such dogmas as, as that God is infinitely perfect. He is true, blessed, just as we mentioned, independence of time. For as for the answer to all of this is plain that we have just said, they are all branches issuing from the derivative dogmas above mentioned. Thus, that God is wise and living and possesses possessing will and powerful, and so on, is all included in the fourth derivative dogma, freedom from defect. From the same source are derived such attributes as righteous, upright, faithful, kind, strong, merciful, gracious, and similar attributes, which signifies perfection, that God had no, has no genus, species, or accident, that he is not in place, and so on. It's also included in the dogma of corporeality, incorporeality, that God does not change, that he is infinitely perfect, and so on, and all included in the dogma of independence of time. For everything that is subject to time is liable to change and finite, that God has no equal or similar to him, and so on. And is all included in the dogma of unity. That God is true is included in the first fundamental principle, the existence of God. For the word true, real, means nothing else except that his existence depends upon himself and not upon another. As we shall make clear that when we explain the word true, blessed means nothing else except that he bestows upon all existing things, all of the perfections which they are capable. And we shall explain later, in short, from these four dogma issues like branches are all things, all those things which are, which have relationships to God, those which are attributed to him as well as those which should not be ascribed to him. And we will now explain every one of these four derivative dogmas by itself, but we must First, explain the subject of attributes, namely, what attributes are to be ascribed to God in what way. And here we end the chapter 7 of Sefer HaIkarim, book 2, and in the following chapter, we're going to look at the clear reflection that an attribute ascribed to a thing to denote its activity does not necessarily imply plurality in the essence of the active thing, for many different acts may proceed from one agent and this is true of both kinds of agent, the natural as well as the voluntary. And so we, we finish off chapter 7, book, book 2, in the following way. And we will take a look at this idea of attributes ascribed to God. Interesting. One of the things we also realize that the fellow Muslims usually have this same idea as well as the one God and the idea in which they do not ascribe to him any human limitations or description because that would in essence limit who God is. You can't put God in a box. And thus this is why this idea both found in Christianity, and I know my, 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 my Hasidic brother may get offended, but also found within the Hasidic workings of the idea of Ainsof in the human form or in human garbs, which is supposed to be understood in a very esoteric and very spiritual way, but downright same as what early Christianity also beheld and felt, that God had made himself physically available, in other words, embodied in the human form, just to be able to compare both. Um, 
it's very clear that the idea that's within, say, the Likutait, um, the Tanya, and that which is reflected in the Christian literature regarding the idea of the Ein Sof in human form, really are in essence the same concepts, but described and defined differently. And this becomes an issue for those of us who basically reject the idea that God is made into a human being. And this is why there are so many parallels that I can be able to easily compare one with the other and be able to say this is not truly within the traditional concepts of Judaism. And this is the reason why, um, with my friend Albo, we discussed this many, many, many times when he was alive, George Albo, uh, and issues regarding this that was rooted in uh, because he was a Chabadnik and uh, you know he was very, very strongly supporting the shul that he went to. And one of the things with him and I we would discuss on personal levels is this same thing, the similarities between one and the other. And unfortunately that got me into a lot of trouble with, with people that I do care about a lot uh, because the, the, the complete reflection <clears throat> of one world with the other is so similar that you have to scratch your head and says, no wonder this is how the whole movement of Christianity started because it was rooted in these esoteric ideologies, which are sages, by the way. If you read the tractates in heaven, and declared it as uh, heresy, declared it as wrong thinking. I'm not talking be, her be heretical to the point that, that people will, well, you, 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 you're completely out of the whack and you got to be declared a heretic. No, 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 no. We're talking about wrong thinking, incorrect thinking, incorrect beliefs, beliefs that were rejected by our sages because of the idea of embracing the idea that a man is God or God or, or God has made himself manifest through a man. Although we have examples of that throughout scripture where God uh, is made known to man through man. For example, Moshe, our teacher, where we saw the very presence of the divine in and through him where he he basically came out with a, like almost like a light fixture throughout his body his body emanated light and so these expressions that we find is fascinating but at the same time one of our basic ideas is that God is not a man based on even numbers in the book of numbers it said very clearly God is not a man that he should lie as a matter of fact this is one of the texts that we usually use to rebuff the Christian notion of God being a man. That God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Qualities which Rabbi Albo in his Sefer HaKarim makes very clear mention regarding this idea. The very moment you accept the idea of incorporeality, you move from basic Judaism to what he calls it heresy or wrong thinking. So think about that as you look forward and start studying the work of Rabbi Album, a 14th, 15th century uh, Jewish leader that had to deal with these concepts very early on in Christianity, which he was basically responding to in his time. And his work is basically the idea of making it very clear. So Rambam is not the only one that defends the idea of there is no corporeality uh, in Judaism or the idea of uh, God-man in a human form. Just the opposite. And this is why it's so important for us to study the work of Rabbi Albo. Um, a work that till this day has have a lot of people turning around. And he wasn't necessarily in agreement with everything that the Rambam says though there's a lot of things he was in agreement with. And we find that very, very illuminating uh, to say the least, and this is the reason why we need to understand the mindset of Rabbi Albo in, in regards to uh, the idea of incorporeality, the idea of <clears throat> of God being uh, completely without a human form, and understand that very clearly that God does not have a body. God does not have a body. So let's go forward and let's move forward and see exactly what all this means in today's world. 
This is Rabbi Moshe Otero. I wish you and yours a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week as we move forward in the study of the Torah. And let me ask you all a question. What topic would you like for me to be able to address here through this medium? We are now, right now, going through the book of, of Sefer HaIkarim, but there's a lot of Jewish materials as well that I'd love to be able to share, but I'm just looking at where do we start? There's so much material. One thing about Judaism, you the more you dig, the more you find, and the more you find, the, the deeper the well of truth gets. And that's the beautiful thing about Judaism. If you would like to become Jewish and you're not here, you're not in the, in the U.S., you're outside, or anywhere you, you are, I mean, I've had many people contact me regarding wanting to convert. And, of course, we know the issues of the conversion politics that exist today. But we will do everything we can to help you to get you to your goal. This is Rabbi Moshe Otero with the Ways of Israel. Shalom and bracha to everyone.